What is up, everybody? Today, I uh, I kind of wanted to do something a little bit different uh, and talk specifically about getting someone into magic and, more specifically, uh, the do's and don'ts of getting somebody into magic. I think uh, a lot of us have, uh, I know this is something that I've done, where my significant other or my really, really good friend, uh, not interested in magic at all, and I really want them to be just so we can play together, we can have a good time, uh, but they just don't seem interested in like, what do you do in that situation? So uh, I wanted to start with actually the don'ts of what to do, uh, because I think that there are a couple traps that are really easy to fall into, uh, again, from personal experience. Uh, and so I kind of just wanted to talk about those first and then talk about maybe how you can better handle those things. So uh, to start off, I think it's very, very easy to start off and say, well, this is really important to me. I really need you to try this. Like it you know, you have to do this, it's really important, uh, put an ultimatum on it for a uh, standard joke, haha. Um, but the idea being that you're putting so much pressure on it, and then all of a sudden they bulk at it because you are putting so much pressure on it, and obviously that's not, that's not really a fun environment. I think you're trying to sell somebody on the fun factor, on the the creativity behind magic, the the fun of sitting down playing a game together. Uh, and so I think it's really, really easy to fall into that trap of, well, you have to do this. You have to. Do it. No, you don't. You don't. It's OK. You can you can step back and say, you know what? This is important to me. But I think what I would rather do is sit down and sell somebody on just having a good time playing a game. And if they don't, that's OK. You, you don't have to have somebody play magic. I think it's easy to get into this trapped mindset of like, well, because I love it so much, you have to love it. And that's not true. Uh, strictly not true. Like, it's okay to like different things, especially uh, given in a relationship. Uh, I think it's really, really easy to say like, you know, well, we're, we're together. It's important that you like the same things that I like. And uh, honestly, that's just not true. It's okay in a relationship, especially to like different things. You actually should like different things, I think, because that keeps things interesting. And so uh, I, I find that that's a really, really crucial thing. Um, and I, to, to kind of explain myself on this one a little bit, um, I at one point uh, was dating someone was very important to me that they tried magic. Uh, and so I, I kind of did the pressuring thing and it was like, hey, you need to back off. Like this is getting a little old and it's, it's not fun. Uh, and I think when you do finally get them to sit down and play, they have been under so much pressure that it kind of ruins the, the moment. It ruins the fun. Uh, and so it's really just not even worth it to start pressuring it in the first place. Uh, and again, don't fall into that trap of like, oh, they have to play because it's important to me. Well, they can play if they want to play, but they don't have to. Uh, and so I think that's really important. Um, I just, I, uh, I, I, Recently, uh, I talked about in one of our recent episodes, just of gameplay, standard gameplay, I talked about um, my my current fiance and that we were sitting down the other morning to have some breakfast. Uh, we're both working from home. Well, she's a teacher right now, so she's technically not working. She's in grad school. But uh, we sat down to have breakfast and she's been very, very kind. And again, trying not to pressure it. I've I've put my my pressure aside and said, hey, if you want to try this game, it's really fun. I think you would enjoy it, but no pressure. If you want to, it's fine. Um, and eventually she kind of warmed up to the idea. Obviously, there's that like stigma of, you know, it's a it's a nerdy thing to do. And like, it's this really expansive game. I mean, even just on the gameplay end, it's very, very uh, daunting for someone who's never played a game like that before. Uh, and so it is very difficult to get someone who has never seen magic before and then all of a sudden, you know, try and jump them into the game. There, there's some steps that you need to go through. Uh, and so, again, trying not to pressure it, I was just like, hey, this is important. I would love for you to play, but don't feel like you have to. And she very sweetly gave it a shot. Uh, and she actually gave it a shot, like, in a very difficult way, which is not the way I would suggest to do it. But we were actually cube drafting. Uh, Will and I were. We were Winston drafting and she jumped in the draft. And I was like, well, this is like diving in head first, uh, but uh, she got it. Like we, Will and I helped her out, of course, and, and she got it. And the other day we were sitting down to breakfast. Again, I told this story, but we sat down and she was, we, we have a card game that my family uh, has played for years and years and she's learned it. And so we usually play that at lunchtime, sometimes in the morning. Uh, it's called Pinochle, if anybody knows it, but uh, her and I sat down and we had a Pinochle deck there and then we had two magic decks because we had played the night before. 
And there was this moment where she looked down and I saw her do this. I saw her like mentally make this decision to say, you know what? I kind of want to play magic instead of pinochle. And in my head, I'm like, all right, that's all I could have ever asked for. That is it. We've, we've gotten there. Uh, and so we did. We, we played two games that morning. Uh, and so I think it's really, really important to not pressure things. Just let it be fun. Let it be a game. Uh, and I think that's the other crucial thing is people start to sell, try and sell people. And granted, it works for some people because they are more fantasy driven. But like a lot of people just like games. Uh, and so selling it as a game and just say, hey, it's just a normal card game. Like, yeah, it's it's got a lot of stuff to it. But at its heart, it's a game. It's a way to just sit down and have fun with people. And I think that getting that point across is the most important thing when you are trying to get somebody into the game, whether that be girlfriend, boyfriend, whether that be just a friend that you, you know, have hung out with and who doesn't play. It could be anybody, even a parent. I think a lot of, you know, a lot of viewers and a lot of players of the game tend to be a bit younger. And so, you know, selling your parents on it. Uh, I know my mom was the first one who got me into Magic. Uh, at 7th edition, she got me the starter set, and she, being the sweetheart that she is, uh, decided to sit down and, like, try and play with me. And it was amazing. It was so fun. Uh, and we got it all wrong. The rules were completely messed up. Like, we threw them out the window, but we had a good time. Uh, and I think that that's the important thing. That's what you have to sell people on is, hey, this is just a really fun thing to do. Uh, it's a game. At its heart, that's all you need it to be. Uh, and so the rest of it is just kind of gravy. Just have fun with it. If you want to take that fantasy role, take that fantasy role. If you want to really get into the deck building portion or the drafting portion or, you know, whatever it is, you can certainly tailor that experience. But I think, I think the key is just to sell somebody on the fact that it's a game. It's a fun way to spend your time with somebody else. Uh, and that's it. That's the whole thing. The, the, I think what gets lost in the community uh, is how serious the game can be and then what the, what the game really is. And I think uh, if that makes sense, that probably doesn't. But, you know, it's a game. Just have fun with it. Uh, that's kind of the takeaway. And I think um, as far as, you know, things that you should be doing uh, versus things that you shouldn't be doing, just don't pressure it. Just have fun with it. Uh, this is not by any means a very extensive video, so I apologize I don't have any better advice than that. But this was just something that kind of came up uh, last night as I was thinking about um, you know, playing, uh, playing games with my fiance. I was like, this is, this is really cool. This is a really special thing. Uh, and I think taking that and, and figuring out how it really actually came to be was really important for me, uh, being that magic is obviously such a big part of my life. And so... Uh, it was really, really a, a kind of revelation moment for me where I got to think about that and figure out, you know, exactly how did that happen and what went wrong in the past. Um, as far as some very specific things that you shouldn't do, please do not do what I did and have her jump into a cube draft. Uh, start with something easy. Uh, there are starter decks out there for new players. Uh, those are exactly what you need to be starting with. Uh, I know as an experienced player, and I know a lot of people watching, are experienced players and so buying the starter decks or building starter decks seems kind of like eh, that's boring like it's not fun but you're not the one who needs those starter decks you know what to do you know how to do this the point is that you're teaching somebody else and so kind of giving them the stepping stones to get there start with basic mechanics start with start with flying start with you know trample and like things like that give each color a very specific mechanic and that's it make it very very simplified don't make it tons of counter spells and draw a ton of stuff and do all that don't do combo decks don't do any of that just focus on very simply the play pattern of the game teach them the phases of the game if you can get the phases down generally speaking it's a lot easier make a little cheat sheet and just have the phases kind of listed out uh, and then what you can do under each phase is very important. So like, that's just kind of my suggestion. Um, but I think it's a pretty easy one to start with. And that just gives you a very solid starting point for uh, hopefully laying that foundation to hopefully get them into the game. And uh, keep in mind, people like simplicity when it comes to games, especially. Um, people also like, you know, super complicated stuff. So I'm not trying to say there you have to go one way. But when you're learning a game, it's really, really easy to get caught up in how many things you don't know. 
and so limit the things that they they are exposed to when you're teaching them the game. I think it's really important to just say, here's a basic mechanic, here's how you play your stuff, and here are the phases of the turn, and here's how you win. You know, I mean, keep it keep it as simple as you can, keep it as concise as you can, and then when you do go to to expand on that knowledge, it's a lot easier because the foundation's there, the phases of the turns are already there, all that stuff. So. This is kind of uh, an impromptu video. Uh, hopefully it was a little bit helpful. Um, please don't pressure it. Uh, and I'm, I'm really putting this video out here because, again, I had a very recent experience where it kind of taught me a lot of things. And I just wanted to share that information with you guys and do a little bit of a different video. It was kind of fun. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Of course, if you did, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And more importantly, if you've got questions about anything, whether it be teaching somebody new or... Uh, just part of the game itself or whatever, uh, feel free to share it down below. I think that's those are the things that are going to spur more videos like this where we just get to kind of sit and talk about some stuff together. Uh, and I, I really enjoy that. So uh, I do appreciate it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. And uh, I will see you very, very soon with hopefully another Talking Head video. These are kind of fun. So I'll see you guys next time.